Hello, welcome to a new episode of Loud Noises. I shouldn't say new, because someone will listen to the future, and there might be a newer episode than this. It'll always be new for them, so it'll always be new for... It might be the second time listeners, not that in-depth in our fascinating opinions. They might come back for a second listen. Not after this intro, they won't. Another quality intro. (laughs) Yes! Welcome to Loud Noises Podcast, not Sons of Music Podcast. I am Badger, with me as always Gareth. Hi. And Paul. Sup? Sick. Uh, We are three (laughs) people who get together every week to talk about... Alternative music, be that what it may be. It's weird. When you, when you use words like sick, you, you, you age. <laughs> I mean, I'm constantly aging, Gareth. Yeah, it's but the, like, the, the dramatically. <laughs> the side side. Speaking of not aging, because they're brand new, that didn't work, but fuck it. We're going to talk about, talk about some new music, as always. This week, we're going to talk about new singles from Fever333 and Enter Shikare. That's how you pronounce it. No, Don't not. question me. <laughs> <laughs> also, new albums from Code Orange and Haggard Cat. Or The Haggard Cat. I'm not sure. Or which. Haggard Cat. Haggard Cat. Also, going to play another sweet game of Don't Trust the Internet. Don't Trust the Internet. Yeah. If you want to jump around to those things, there'll be timestamps in the description below. Uh, but for now, we're going to do no news because there's no news. Paul, do no news. <laughs> I mean, there is some news. <laughs> Skimming. It's like one tiny little itty bitty news. Everything is cancelled. <laughs> no, <laughs> literally but, everything. <laughs> it's one of those like, no, get it. I do get it. Yeah, I understand, <laughs> I understand why. Yeah, I understand why. But yeah, so basically, uh, if anyone has been living under a rock uh, this last couple of weeks, uh, basically everything is getting cancelled at the moment, uh, musically. Uh, so this is, we've had like tons of tours and events and things that have been pulled. I mean, the big ones that I've seen this week are uh, Lama God, uh, Machine Head, um, I think Run the Jewels and Rage Against the Machine announced that they're mm-hmm. pulling out their um, first half of their European dates. Power um, as well. Code Orange, yeah, ever uh, they've pulled out their I mean, any band that Cabello had a tour. Attack, Ithaca yeah. and Big Thief cut theirs short yeah. as well. Yeah, um, uh, Pledge Serves EU run got caught. Yeah, everyone's either cancelled before they got there or are calling it a day now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so basically. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I misspoke. Except for the exploited. Just, I recommend looking up the statement for the leader of the exploited. The punk band who basically turned around and went, dude, I've had five heart attacks. I ain't stormed for shit. I ain't Green Day. I don't give a fuck. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. actually a, it, the guy's quote was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, recommend is, looking it up. Yeah. That's really good. Like, it's not only affecting him, though, is it? Um, no, of course. No. <laughs> uh, and also, the exploited are what, like 90 years old on average? I mean, they look it. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. they're a high risk group, as are most of their fans. <laughs> it's probably best that they don't tour right now. Um, but yeah, um, so basically, everyone and their mother is uh, cancelling their European and UK dates at the moment, and some US stuff as well. Uh, there's a lot of states that are banning large groups uh, at the moment in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think it's over that, 250 people, isn't it? Yeah, a couple, a couple of states have already said no gatherings over 250. Uh, obviously, we saw last week we were talking about our South by Southwest got cancelled. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I mean, not a great time to be a musician or a fan of music at the moment. No, I think yeah. the biggest was it Coachella, the one that got pushed back. I think that's yes. the biggest festival outside of South by Southwest that they're just like, nope, that one's gone as well. <laughs> yeah, so that's been postponed until like I think they said uh, October time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think basically anything that's so basically every tour that's happening between now and the endish of May has been cut. Mm-hmm. So May, June onwards, you might still be able to go, but then we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of these uh, tours have been turned around, saying, "Yeah, hold on to your tickets because when they get res- there will be rescheduled." Yeah, uh, so you will be able to go. Um, there's a few that are doing like different things. Um, obviously, most are just doing like either postponing or cancelling outright. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the interesting one that I saw was the Code Orange uh, announcement this week. Yeah. Uh, so as of recording. Uh, so we're recording on the Saturday the 14th. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for us, it'll be 1am on the 15th. They're basically playing a live show, uh, but yeah. it's in an empty venue and they're streaming it on Twitch. I think uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so it'd be twitch.tv, Code Orange Official. Uh, yeah. So if you know about it, you've watched it. If not, you'll probably be able to go back and check it out after the fact. Uh, but yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, so it's just going to be them playing, obviously, all their songs from there. Uh, new album, uh, which we'll be talking about later. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean... I like, to say, um, I like to say... I like to the thing is like, that thing that Corey is doing is very cool. Mm-hmm. And I think we've got like, so you can still sort of watch them live. It's not the same, obviously. 
Yeah. Because they actually have experience. But it's cool they're doing something and nothing. Yeah. Uh, uh, one my thing they're saying my, is... Go on, sorry. No, sorry. The only thing to me is like, what I would find mildly amusing is someone not knowing about this and then finding this live stream and going like, they have no fans. <laughs> that venue's completely empty. Not so one <laughs> ticket. <laughs> not going to guess them. They're really going for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, the interesting thing that they're doing on top of obviously just playing an empty venue is they're also making all of their toy merch only available through the Twitch uh, live stream. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, so you'll only be like, things you would have only been able to pick up on tour, you can oh, now okay. only pick up when they do this live show. Yeah, I suppose uh, that's... I mean, I'm sure it'll go online because... after the fact, but I mean, it's a, it's a pretty yeah. cool thing. Yeah. In this time of coronavirus crap and tours getting cancelled left, right and centre... If you want to still support your favourite bands, go buy some merch, I guess, because they probably will have paid a small or reasonable large amount of money to have some merch done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You say sat wearing your new sweet employed to serve merch. So Crispin <laughs> New is employed to sweet t shirt. So Crispin New. Yeah. Um, yeah, they were 45 quid off me then. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if, 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 if you can, like, you were going to go see a band and they've cancelled the tour, maybe see if you can buy some merch from them because they're currently going to be out of pocket because they probably would have bought merch for that tour and it's probably already been printed. Mm-hmm. And now it's mostly it'll probably just be sat somewhere. So if you can go grab something to support those bands still, do that. Yeah, hundred percent. Like I've seen a few like bad stories going around at the moment about bands that have had to cancel and it's basically for uh, long story short, it's kind of crippling them financially. Yeah, yeah. Uh I mean I think the biggest story that I saw this week was uh and I'm gonna pronounce the name wrong, uh Linguaring Nota. Yes. Uh so there was a story about how basically she had to cancel all of her tours. Uh, which has left her massively out of pocket because it's basically her sole income, pretty much. Uh, on top of that, she also now has to pay for surgery oh, uh, for a herniated disc in her spine. Uh, and yeah, so basically she's like massively out of pocket and about to get hit by a load of bills. Uh, so if you are a fan, um, definitely go out there and have a look. Uh, either pick up some merch, or I know a lot of bands nowadays uh, now, uh, well, this week have been posting like PayPal and Venmos and things like that. So if you can chuck a couple of quid to a band that you enjoy, hmm. uh, I'm sure they will massively appreciate it. Oh, also, I was just thinking about just uh, this pop to my head. I should really put this <coughs> in for the sweet doc. <coughs> it reminded me because of vinyls. We all love mm-hmm. a good vinyl, right? Oh, good vinyl. But, <laughs> oh. um, just remember, Record Store Day, mm-hmm. which is in April, mm-hmm. that has all been postponed because of the coronavirus. But, but the shops are still going to be open. I guess it's just handling and shipping and Huh. It's it's not just that it's like something like record store day like actively like encourages people to queue up together yeah go out in mass to collect these records yeah and so yeah it's a breeding ground for germs I guess but like I just, you, you it's like I told you about supermarkets earlier I was just like but where do you draw the line like yeah if you don't need to have a vinyl record to live you kind of need food and toilet paper and stuff mm-hmm. you can't get toilet paper anymore nah, no. it's just fucking ham isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah you think that but I tried that today there's none for sale. <laughs> Amazon are going to be fucking laughing in a bit, I think, if they can get some. Are they, aren't dear. Amazon always laughing? They're fucking yeah. Amazon. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. So, yeah. Anyway, in summary, I think, just to, I'd, I'd say, like, if you can go out and support the smaller bands that probably need the money more, mm-hmm. like the band that Paul said that we definitely can't pronounce the name of, <laughs> or Ithaca, or Code Orange even, maybe probably need the money a bit more, then mm-hmm. say Machine Head. Yeah. But yeah, give those guys yeah. some money. Throw was some that, oh, that was the other big one. Was, uh, was it Download New Zealand or Australia were cancelled when Mike M's headlining? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think Mike M pulled out of all shows yeah. so far. Mike M pulled out, but then Download itself ends up oh, right, yeah. um, cancelling. But it's just like, yeah, th- those guys right now, they, they'll, think, they'll come back round, you'll go see them again. I think the, the only <laughs> festival, well, the only festival I've seen that's come out and been like, don't fucking worry about it, it's going to go up and regardless, is Slam Dunk. Oh, no, they didn't say it's going to go on regardless. They did. They said it's like, regardless no, they... of what happens, we're still going to try and go ahead. So even if, like, they lose all their American bands, they, they're going to still try and do something. Oh, see, so I got from what the Slam Dunk Festival was saying was basically just like, they have no plans of cancelling, but they do understand that, like, there are powers that be who can be mm-hmm. like, yeah, that ain't happening. Well, <laughs> and they did reassure well, them, like, they'll be this full This the problem with the written word. It can be misconstrued. Maybe <laughs> they should ring everyone individually. To be fair, that's how you should probably look at everything. It's like, all these people are like, we're going to shit, we'll keep going. There's a power that be who can be like, no, no, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for leads in general, like I think for the lead side, uh, like the council own Temple Newsom. Right. They could just turn around and say, yeah, we're, we're cancelling yeah. your license because mm-hmm. we be- don't want to risk it personally. No, yeah. I think it's things, a lot of these tours and these cancellations, I think have been down to 
government officials and countries yeah, and stuff making the decision yeah, rather yeah. than yeah. the band be like, nah. Yeah, a lot of them have been like, well, yeah, I want to go on tour, mainly because I'm going to get paid for it, but um, at the end of the day, like half the venues have cancelled and yeah. Yeah. the other half of the, the entire state is saying no. Just mm. safe, innit? Well, that's the thing, yeah. it's understand on both sides. I've seen one artist literally say just like that she personally chose to cancel her tours on the basis of the fact that that she is like in the high risk category because mm-hmm. she has like a uh, really bad asthma I think it was or like something to do with respiratory I feel you so she yeah so she was just like I would love to but I can't risk <laughs> doing yeah, it yeah, like yeah. no one's stopping me but me <laughs> it was like yeah totally we understand well, yeah but anyway yeah. round that up because you've all heard this you could go on and you're gonna yeah. hear it some more and you it's all not done yet all <laughs> everyone's talking about um, so we'll go on to next so we'll talk about the only two shows that surprisingly got announced this week it's not that surprising because everything's got fucking cancelled. <coughs> Excuse me, I am. Um, oh no, it's got coronavirus. I mean, you, oh yeah, are you currently in isolation, Paul? <laughs> yeah, 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 I am. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I've. Yeah, if if I'm not on next week's episode, you know why? Um, oh my god, <laughs> Skype. Is the internet's down. Like, yeah, 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 the internet, if the internet's understand. down, I might as well die. Jesus. <laughs> uh, That's uh, but yeah, really uh, moving on from uh, from uh, yeah, sad news. Uh, kind of happy news, yeah. We've got a couple of tour dates announced. Uh, um, so the first one is a Biffy the Clyro tour. <laughs> yep, Biffy the Clyro. <laughs> <laughs> no, what is a Clyro? It's Cliffy Byro. <laughs> <laughs> All those words are in the right order. The Biffy Clyro tour is the, what I meant to say. Um, yep. So yeah, so <laughs> God damn it, I am totally <laughs> surprised. <laughs> High on cold and flu over there, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, hurting a little bit. Um, so yeah, so Biffy Clyro have announced a uh, 2020-2021 uh, uh, tour. Um, quite a few dates on this one. Uh, so oh, yeah. kicking off in September, twenty uh, fifth in Aberdeen. Uh, again, I'm not going through all of these because it's a lot. Uh, but they are going through from then all the way up until the uh, 9th of November in Stockholm, and then uh, in twenty twenty one they're going over for three dates in uh, Australia. Cool. Nice. I'm sure by then all will be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Hope so. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean. The way that people oh, are acting at the moment, I think that it's kind of like we don't. I don't want to keep going on about Corona, but and stuff, but uh, or COVID nineteen. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean the way that people are like tackling it at the moment, I think we we'll get we're going to get a good grip on it, hopefully. Yeah, uh, wishful thinking. So I mean, like, well, or as long as you're outside of you know the UK, mm-hmm. everyone else seems to have a good handle on it. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you've got toilet paper, you're all right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just post you some sheets mate yeah, so you can <laughs> envelope it's fine uh, yeah uh, so yeah 2020 2021 pretty good dates um, one thing I do want to know and it's something I've never really noticed before but okay. two out of the three people in Biffy Clyro <laughs> are they brothers I never thought that and I literally had that thought only from this poster I also have questions from the poster image yeah so the, Did, that image, it's like the two guys that aren't the lead singer. Is it's like a before and after prison? <laughs> <laughs> like, it looks like it looks like if if you just photo ed, pick one of them and bung them in Photoshop and just played around with their hair mm-hmm. and just like this is what he'd look like bald. This is what he'd look like with a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it's really it is bizarre. I've never noticed that before, but yeah, <coughs> maybe maybe not. They're just both ginger and weirdly. That's not the question I had. That's not the thought I had. My, my thought is more like. Whoever took this photo, it's like, and they're obviously just doing like normal faces, like, nah, uh, guy on the left, can you look like serious as fuck, like you want to hit me? He, he did, and then guy on the right, can you look really quizzical? Yeah, he yeah. gave them all different points of reference, <laughs> yeah. didn't he? Yeah. And the guy in the middle just look into the distance. The Which guy one? on the right looks like he's about to go, ooh, Like, cheeky. you really want someone's sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like a mean sandwich over there. That is a tasty tour. Tasty. <laughs> and the guy on the left's like, you fucking. Fuck you and me. your sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tour, mate. I'll fucking tour you. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Biffy, well known for being like their new music's definitely been a little bit more uh, sort of up and down, up and down, uh, depending on what you've liked in the past by them. Mm-hmm. I've always been Biffy though for a yeah, while. Yeah, but Biffy Live have always been known as being a fucking hell of a show. <laughs> yeah. So well worth getting after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. Good stuff. Next. 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 Do not know why I sang that, but there it is. Okay. Uh, next oh, up, please. we have uh, some filthy hardcore. Uh, we've got a Kublai Khan tour. 
Yes. Uh, so yeah, so this is a European tour by the uh, the Badasses in Kublai Khan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're kicking off Europe and UK. Um, so we are getting um, well. First up, we've got supports. We've got antagonist AD. I am and uh, Justice for the Damned as the main yes. support. Mm-hmm. I don't know who I am are, but I've heard no. the other two. No, yeah, ditto. Um, I've heard the other names float around and stuff, but yeah, mm-hmm. I'll check them out. Because uh, I'm thinking about going to this one, because I should have recovered by the uh, September dates. You'd hope so. <laughs> yeah, you think so, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, but they're kicking off uh, the 4th of September in uh, Europe. Um, yeah, again, I'm not going to go through all the dates, because we'll be here all day. But uh, yeah, starts on 4th of September, ends on the 26th. Uh, big dates for us would be Manchester Rebellion on the 21st uh, then there's Glasgow Leeds Key Club uh, on the 23rd and then a London Brighton and uh, back over to Europe for one last date at our shot yeah it's as if they knew that the two of you get annoyed if they choose either Leeds or Manchester they exactly. were nice enough to do both for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> are you guys uh, up for going to this one um do you know, I think my, my gig ban will probably be up by then, so I might be tempted. <laughs> I mean, this might be the first gig you can get to at this point. <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. Let's see how gagged I am to, to throw money at gigs, depending on how many I wasn't able to go to this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not for me. Just I'm not a big, massive Cooper Khan fan. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I'm yeah. up for it, because uh, I really enjoyed the, uh, the last record. Yeah. No, I think I remember the last record. Did we do the last record? Mm-hmm. No. Did, did yeah, we? yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, God, we, yeah, we did, didn't we? I remember it being... Yeah, I remember it now. I remember being all right, but I've not gone back to it since. No, that's fine. I think it's one of those bands like, just good heavy band, like for mostly for people who are pissed off. <laughs> uh, and I'm pissed off, but not that much. So. <laughs> I'm like mildly pissed off. Yeah. I'm not mildly loose, perturbed. pissed off. So, you, you, oh, okay. you, you like disgruntled hardcore. Yeah, yeah. I like disgruntled. <laughs> slightly disgruntled. I won't do anything about it. I'll just half you. <laughs> So. Whereas you whereas I will, give me nothing but frustrated hardcore, please. Yeah. I, whereas I will kick you square in the shin. So <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect for me this time. Fair enough. <laughs> that's it. That, yeah, that's literally it for news. That's like, the news. Yeah, I mean, got uh, how are you guys except... going? Anything going on? You want to talk <laughs> about? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, also we didn't mention at the top of the episode. I went to see Turnstile employed to serve this week. Right. A palm reader. So I'll talk about that later on. I completely forgot to mention that at the top of the episode. But cool. Anyway, Paul, are you okay with that? Or are you going to have a breakdown? Oh, I'll have a terrible breakdown. Cause <laughs> the video! <laughs> I can't go. I'm stuck in the house. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. It does suck. Uh, Let's anyway. talk new music. Yeah, yeah so we've got some new music. Uh, crisp 18 minutes in. That's a new fucking record. I know, right? So, uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about singles first, as is per tradition of the podcast. So first we have the new single from Fever333, Presence is strength. Um, this actually kind of came online about a week ago, two weeks ago. <gasps> Not fresh. What? Not that fresh. They put. They only put it out on SoundCloud. Oh, that don't mm. count. And YouTube, I think it was. Okay. Only kids but we don't that. use those things <laughs> except for SoundCloud because that's where we host our podcast online. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but it's on Spotify now, so it's new to us. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you think, Gareth? Um... Nothing but positive. <laughs> Basically, it it. no, 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 I, no I, I fucking love this. This is unlike I can't remember the name of the last Fever track which came out, but Vandals. it sounded more like it was more of just a B side of what Vandals. would have been. Yeah, uh, that sounded more like it was a B side of what was previous. This is for me just an absolute solid Fever track, which can lead on to something. You know what I'm assuming they record a new album. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's classic fever, but it's got a bit more to it than what we had previously. Um, so yeah, nothing but positive, but also not much to break down because it's, would you say it's anything other than what you'd expect from fever? Um, I'd say it's probably a bit more, I don't know. It's one of those where like, I'm not overly surprised, Yeah. but what kind of upsets, well not upsets me by, but like a bit like, mm. there's no like heavy bit in it. There's no like particularly like raucous like guitar parts or anything no but it brings like the 
the the strong choruses that you'd yeah. also want. It, so it's just it's, yeah. it's just putting eff- you know sort of more emphasis on one positive side of the band than the other positive side of the band. So yeah, yeah. Not not every single has to like encapsulate all facets of the band. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just that we've not had one like that in a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and again, that's I guess that's nice because it's like it's nice to have that like know that they're still doing that kind of sound. Uh, so yeah, so it's. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I really enjoyed this one. Uh, again, mm. I like the more like structured, like poppier side to it uh, mm-hmm. that, that we know that these guys can do. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, um, it's it's not surprising as you guys have said. Like, I, I wasn't surprised that this is what it sounded like. Uh, I was pleasantly, uh, I was happy to hear like a, a nice strong pop chorus to it. Yeah. Um and like it's always neat. It's nice to see uh, uh, Butler's like cleaner vocals cutting through again as always. Because, uh, yeah, he's got an amazing voice. So yeah. it's nice to see this, like, as a nice little showcase to that. Yeah. I'm also beginning to feel like he is the busiest man in the music industry right now. Jesus <laughs> Christ, <laughs> yeah. Like, fair play. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's obviously he also dropped his own, like, solo song, didn't he? Mm-hmm. We're not doing that on the podcast just because we don't have any business talk about, like, hip hop stuff. I mean, arguably, we haven't got business talking about any of this. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, you get it. I mean, you go check that out on your own time. Yeah, right? of course. You know I mean? But no, um, but between that, between pressure cracks, between the what the producer he does, the guest vocals he does, it's like, mm-hmm. Mr. No Days Off right there. Like. Right, right, right. He fucking loves it. He fucking loves it. Uh, but this, this song itself, like, I first listen, I wasn't overly impressed, just because I think, but I had the same kind of feeling with the album. I remember listening to the album for the first time, I was like, it's good. I feel it's for it, like, it'd be great for a younger generation of, like, this kind of more popular metal sound, I think like a Linkin Park or a I know, Pierce the Veil or something like that. I know, me and you've talked about this, but I just I think it's purely because nothing yet, even though there's, there's been pretty much nothing but good sort of music coming out of yeah. Fever, mm-hmm. nothing has quite hit the heights as that initial EP. Yeah, but yeah. even though like their music's been great, you still want that initial like, oh my fucking just god, fucking rage, I, yeah. I, I worship that. And yeah. I like the rest. <laughs> like, yeah. The rest is great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I know that's thing. I, I always kind of want. I'm hoping for that kind of EP rawness again. But I'm never. I don't think that's ever going to happen again. Yeah. again. No. But they uh, transcended. <laughs> no, it's, it's got some good, like interesting. Obviously, fever. It's just fever, really. It's got some interesting, like breaking down parts, and obviously more rappy kind of hip hop influenced parts. Mm-hmm. Very big epic y singy chorus, which. You put E at the end of everything, then. E, <laughs> e, e singing, e, <laughs> e, fevery, three, 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 e stuff. No, it's it, it's good. I think I, you know, it's one of those where like I don't know who I'd necessarily recommend it to, but at the same time, like someone off the top of my head, I won't be like, oh, that's a friend I'd give this to. But then this is like so openly probably for everybody. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's not like a little sort of niche one. Where you're like, oh, I know someone will like this. You go, oh, I could bang this on in basically any environment. I think people will be yeah, like, oh, it's good people. That. <laughs> I think if you like Fever Three Three Three, yeah. so I hate that kind of thing. Like, if you like Fever Three Three Three, <laughs> you'll like this. But it's not a divergence away from anything. It's just them getting stronger. I've noticed. I was thinking about it as well. Like they've managed to make us talk about three songs. And I don't know if they're going to be on this album they're currently writing. Mm. I don't know if it's like so they're in the middle of writing the second album. So I don't know if this is, these are just three songs they've just done canned and they're just releasing, yeah. or if they're just three random songs before they got bored. Mm. Because they're the kind of band that do that. They released a whole song. Do you remember Triggered? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow, that was a while. When yeah, was no. that? It fucking sometimes in the EP and the album, <laughs> no one remembers it properly because it just kind of came out and mm. just got washed away. But it's fucking that was a fucking good tune as well. Um. So I'd be interested to see if these all make the trap, the album. It yeah. kind of I not... could see this one making the album more so than the last one. Like I said, it's. I think the Velasquez Vandals the last one was like I think we did talk about yeah. the podcast, and it was like this would be great as like a interlude style middle of the album kind of track to break up the album a bit, but mm-hmm. as a single is a bit like lackluster. Yeah, this is a good strong single. It is. So I'll yeah. tell you that. I'll say in terms of like what you want, what, what you should do. Listen, listen to it if you want. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm goddamn right. Okay. I, I think there's literally just a spot on Fever track. Like it, it, it doesn't hit the best of every aspect yeah. of Fever, but this is Fever doing exactly what they do uh, at their absolute highest level. Like I think it's spot on. I I suppose yeah. it's, good it, it. it's got. I've already. I'm, which we're talking about. I've got like parts of the song just running through my head. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I, I'm, as you guys are talking, I'm just like quietly humming it to myself uh, but no I think this is yeah I think this is a goddamn right now for me as well mainly because it is such a strong like just single track mm. on its own like I think it, it 
it's got that great chorus that's like super catchy, as we say, we're all yeah, it's in my head talking now. and <laughs> it's in our head. Uh, and it's less like, yeah, I think it, it basically captures the best parts of their like more accessible side. Yeah. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's a really good like showing for a, a, an introduction to the band, I think. Yeah, I agree with um, that. Uh, and then you can get into the more deep cuts from this. Uh, but yeah, uh, I loved it and I 100% think people should check it out. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yay. Yay. Yay! Apologies also if you can hear my cat constantly meowing. He's just a thirsty bitch today. I don't know why. <laughs> he's, he's literally just been attacking my, ward, my cupboard. Yeah, I saw it. I had to stifle <laughs> laughter earlier. I just saw a cat paw come out of nowhere just twat your cupboard. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what's going on with him. He's, just, he's in one of those moods. He's mad uh, for a bit of fever, mate. Yeah. He knows. There's <laughs> probably like at least 50% of the listeners are like, I'd rather hear the cat. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I, I can understand. He's, right, he's chilling out now. Yeah. So, we'll, anyway, we'll, we'll moving on. We have another <laughs> single. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, In Chicago dropped a new song. I don't know what the thing is. I think this the other day. Is it a single or is it just a new song? Can we treat uh, it as single. everything single? It's just because there's no video or anything. kind of just dropped. And Obviously, the first single, which has a video to it now, Mm-hmm. Got massive hype, got radio play. This kind of just came out and then just sat there. I don't care, it's a new song. It's a new song. Yeah. yeah. So, Call it whatever you want, mate. Th- this is, <laughs> this is, as you call it, The King with weird parentheses yeah. above stuff. It. Yeah. Um, uh, this, I feel, is, it's, it's, it's a good tune. It's not as strong as the first single, I don't think. No. It's still damn enjoyable. I think it's because they've done the, they've done the, obviously the, the Shikari thing of the, like, the spoken E parts. Mm-hmm. Like, the, I, I don't want to say, like, I don't want to call it rapping, but it's it's. Cop- it is almost like a zero. it is like yeah. a spoken word, a spoken yeah. word that kind of sounds like it is his it own just brand flung, of yeah. like hip hop almost. It's bizarre, <laughs> sort of, yeah. Um, it's got and it's very like catchy stuff, and it's it's, a, it's quintessential kind of Shikari again, where it's obviously a bit. I just found it like a bit. Dreamers Hotel, I got on board with straight away, mm. and I love that song, and I listened to it a bunch since. This one, I don't know if I'll revisit it as a single as much, but I think it'll be fine sat on the album. Yeah, so. Um, I fucking love this. <laughs> yeah, that is. Yeah, I know. It, it's these last two fucking tracks of Enshikari have been some of my favorite things I've heard them do. As somebody who's not followed them for you know throughout their career, sort of like, I, mm. I definitely wanted to actively stay away from them when they first came out. <laughs> uh, so I, I missed a large portion of Enshikari's history because when they first came out, I was just like, yeah, that's that's not for me. Uh, it's just like um, the clapping, blah blah blah. It, yeah. yeah. And basically, lots of people liked them, so I was like, well, I can't like them then. Uh, <laughs> I think when this, this band first came out, you were like just deep in punk. <laughs> you were so deep in punk. Desperately trying to be different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, this, um, literally straight off the bat, the, the energy of, um, it's, a, it's another track where you just mentioned King as well, which is quite weird for the two singles. The what? It's the, the two singles this week where they both mentioned King, as in a uh, King. Yeah, yeah, Fever yeah. had it as well. You're the looking chorus. at it. Do, do you not listen to any lyrics of Fever? Oh, no. I don't, I don't remember all the fucking okay. words. <laughs> it's the chorus. <laughs> I can't, like, right. I understand that he's, Jason Butler's voice is amazing and everything, but sometimes I do want to okay. sort of understand <laughs> all the words he's saying. But no, the um, the, the the instant vocals of, uh, what was it, we used, I used to be a king. Those vocals came across like so harsh the first few times I sounded it in the best possible way. After listening to it a bit more, it's all weirdly like lightened. I, I I think it's just the initial impact of it. The first time I heard it, it came across a lot heavier and a lot harder. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's just because it took me a bit off. I wasn't expecting it because I fucking love it when I, I'm not sure the lead singer's name. I can't remember it now, but his fucking wow. vocals when he fucking goes is so good. And I think this and Dreams Hotel is just a perfect example of a band uh, on the cusp of releasing easily what could be one of their best albums. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd agree with that. I think this does sound like it's like the distilling the best parts of like Enrique Shikari. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found this again. I think you guys, you two, have covered it. This is the problem with me going third. <laughs> <laughs> we need to next Sunday, time. Don't you, we? you go first next time. <laughs> Yay! Uh, but no, I think you guys like kind of covered it. Like it's not as strong as as a Dreamers Hotel, uh, mm. but it's still great. Like I think it's done what it should do now like now I just want the album I just I just need the album out now because uh, A we're not talking about any more singles you've had your two fuck right <laughs> uh, but yeah no I think it's 
it kind of repeats itself a little bit, but that's just a minor quibble. Uh, when it yeah. when what repeats is as fun uh, to to listen along and sing along to as mm. this one is. Um, again, it feels like it's more streamlined in like capturing all the parts of what make Enter Shikari great. Like I think I kind of went off Enter Shikari around the middle of their albums when they started kind of leaning one way or the other in right. their sound. Uh, like they start putting like a lot more electronic stuff in there and moving mm-hmm. away from like more of the hardcore sound that they had, uh, and I think yeah this is kind of like bringing it back a little bit, mm. uh, and right. I think that's why yeah I'm super excited for the album, um, and yeah I think people should definitely check this out. Yeah, I I definitely say check it out because I think like Dreams Hotel was a s- super strong single, mm-hmm. especially as a lead song. It's like the probably the best. I mean, I'm not obviously not the album, but I think it's a very good lead single, mm-hmm. and this is a good follow up. Um, and obviously, if you re- release such a strong first single, then the second one's always going to be a bit like it's not as good as the first, but it's still damn good, it's yeah. still enjoyable. No, I love it. I'm all kinds of positive it's, about this. I've played this multiple times. <laughs> I can't. I'm look. I'm just genuinely psyched to hear this album. Like yeah. Paul said, like, and you've mentioned as well. Like, kind of, it's it's arcing back to like a bit of everything. I think the band themselves said like this new album is going to be like all types of previous Shikari mixed into one album. Yeah, so I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to hearing that. And I think like. I'd say with back on something Paul said though, like because you kind of wandered off halfway through, didn't you? And you've kind of come back. Yeah, so like, like two, three albums in, I think I just yeah. kind of switched off. I did a very similar thing. Like I think like after the after um, the third album, mm-hmm. I kind of went uh, okay. I'm kind of she carried out for now, and I kind of disappeared. Like picked up bits and bobs on the way, and then they dropped the spark. Yeah, and I fucking love that album. I think I mentioned it before. Well, that's how you got m- me yeah, into, yeah. interested in Enter Chicago. Have you heard Love Outside? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but then like going back, then I got inspired and go revisiting the two albums previous, which is um, Flash Full of Color and Mind Sweepers. Mm-hmm. Those like revisiting those are fucking cracking albums. The de- they got a couple of strong tracks on. So like, if you enjoy this and you've kind of done what we have done, where you've fallen out or you've not even heard those albums before, I'd go back and revisit. Stuff like that. I think it's just something really enjoyable about listening to Andrew Shikari as well, because you'll. There's not it's a, usually a good fun. Well, between his vocal styles and their musical, like, influences, whatever, or they're, they're influenced by their own influences at this yeah. point, it's no, no other sound like it for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's always quite nice to have a band where you're like, yeah, you can't really make too many relations with anyone else. They are very much Andrew Shikari. <laughs> yeah. I like it. It's usually like, you always get like a kind of fun vibe off Shikari, but also it's like, it's very well written. And also the fact that a lot of the vocal, like the vo- a lot of the rigs, are like basically saying how the world is shit and the governments are stupid and how we should fix that sort of thing. So it's like fun plus awareness. Plus oh god, yeah, yeah. they have been very good music, writing. very uh, politically aware yeah. <laughs> for a while now. That's what you want? That's what you want? Going a bit of fun and the way you go. Yeah, Boris Johnson is a dick. I mean, I don't need that to tell I you. I know, but, but I'm glad they're on our side. Yeah. <laughs> But if you weren't sure, hey, I was just, just going to have it clarified by a band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I'd fucking check it out. Solid single, mm-hmm. loved it. Indeed. Or is it a single? I don't know. It's something I've never it's had on. to bring up before, but I brought up, and I still don't I just, really care. It's just I a mean, song by a band. It's just me being pedantic for no reason. <laughs> it's using the album artwork. It's yeah, it's Good enough. following on from a sing- previous single. But <laughs> well, I think they're all like the the artwork for this and the artwork for the last one are like mod, like slight variations of the album artwork, mm-hmm. which is. Nice little touch to it, yeah. so it's kind of unique, but it also reminds you kind of where it's coming from. So I think they always yeah. do that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So anyway, moving on to albums. Fine. Go on, man. Go. Right, so we're going to start off with thanks. <laughs> um, going to start off with Code Orange new album, Underneath. Underneath we did what? Huh? Underneath what? I don't know. Underneath. Oh. Underneath. Under all DC. <laughs> Yep. Cold and flu. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> um, obviously, we've done two songs off this before, as yep. is per the mm-hmm. tradition. The one which I'm not allowed to say. Uh, what, underneath? No. Swallowing the rabbit. Oh, s- swallowing the rabbit hole. Yeah. I'm not doing it. Hole. I'm not saying it. That's where that came from. <laughs> I forgot where that came from. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, as promised, Paul, what do you think of this album? Um, I'm going to bring back something that I used to say all the time in 2019. Cool. This is my current album of the year. <laughs> First time you said this year? Yeah, I think so. Was oh, wait, 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 did Lowe's not get that? I think it I think it was gonna make the list. Ah. Uh, but this is currently number one. Okay. Um, okay. I, mean, I mean to be fair, who uh, who fucking didn't see that coming? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you say that, but like we were a bit unsure on the first single, uh, and I was a bit like worried that it mm. wasn't going to be as good as it was. But 
yeah, like listening to this album in full of the last couple of days has completely blown all worry away. And I honestly think these guys deserve to be as big as they are, if not bigger. Uh, this album somehow manages to make hardcore like genuinely interesting again for me. Yeah, like I, I like I, I like hardcore. Like I, I do love it a lot, but it's like a lot of it kind of falls into like one of two categories. It's either straight up similar hardcore to everything else, and it's just fine to listen to, or it it is an album that genuinely pushes the boat out. And yeah, makes, oh hell yeah, makes the sound interesting again. And this is what this album's done. It's it's managed to take like elements of things that are distinctly not hardcore. <laughs> And yep. somehow make the heaviest album that's come out for me this year. Uh, like it's got elements of like industrial metal, like Nine Inch Nails are in there. Um, it's got thrash sections. It's got genuinely catchy choruses for nowhere in some of the songs. And then yeah, it's just like got the most brutal hardcore I've heard this year. Uh, and somehow manages to like meld it all into one little weird melting pot that just works perfectly throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, I think touching on like when we said about the singles as well, like underneath as being like was a really weird like release on its own. Yeah, but then I we, we enjoyed put it as, like, that as a single, but that was a tad worrying if for a Code Orange fan, I guess, going into as, the album as the lead single. Yeah, I've seen a few people say like that lead single would really kind of throws you well, off a bit, so, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it throws you off the scent. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Like, it got me a little bit worried about what the album was going to be like, but then as you think about it, like, now listening back when it's, like, the last track on there, and it's, like, a perfect outro to the what's just yes. come before, uh, and, yeah, I just, yeah, I think this is probably one of the few, like, faultless albums I've heard this year so far. Mm. Like not for me, per- I mean, this is my yeah, personal yeah, yeah. taste. Like, I think production's amazing. Uh, songwriting is genuinely like it's it's actually got me excited to listen to it, uh, mm-hmm. which not a lot of music does. Like, I like a lot of music, but nothing actually genuinely gets me excited to listen back to it again. Um, I love how they've gotten kind of played with that kind of like technical sound, like like digital sound as well. Uh, so like you just get like a standard riff and then all of a sudden it starts cutting out and they start mixing it up and like mixing in that kind of like digital sound waves in there and stuff yeah. that yeah you don't get from a hardcore band usually uh, mm. and yeah um, but what do you guys think I was like so <laughs> it's a super fucking interesting album I'll say that mm-hmm. there's a lot going on probably I think you probably said most of it with like obviously there's loads of fucking shit just thrown in this album mm-hmm. so I've actually listened to this album at least three times. Oh, bless. I know, oh. right? <laughs> Luckily, I'm kind of fucking about with jobs at the moment, so I don't really... I, I, you know, redundancy has its benefits. Um, so, it's, it's one of these... Like, I mean, obviously, the, it starts off fucking strong. Like, mm-hmm. straight away, like... That intro straight into Swallowing the Rabbit Hole. I fucking love it. It's great stuff going on. I think it kind of like, it starts off in a good way. So if you somehow not heard the singles, like if you're a Code Orange fan or whatever, or you know you're going to speak, like you're okay, it's fine. And the kind of, as the album goes on, it gets a bit more, we're doing this now. We're trying different bits. Mm-hmm. The, the main things that stand to me is like, I can't pin down a lot of the album because it's so busy. I feel like I have to stare at each song <laughs> and like focus on it because they're all like, they're all different in their own way, but they also kind of, some of them kind of do, Blend a bit, not like yeah. they're not dead stand outy. That makes sense. Um, I wouldn't necessarily agree with them not standing out. I think when you realise which songs which, and I think yeah. they stand out. But I think yeah, this album does not lend itself to being reviewed after two days of listening to it. No, no, this is the thing. It's it's fucking. That's why I've had to try and listen to it as much as possible mm-hmm. whenever I can. Start like standout songs for me personally is like Cold Metal Place. Mm-hmm. So that to me, like I think that's all. The, like after the first initial two three tracks, that's one that starts me. Um. And then Sulf- Sulfur Surrounding as well, which I think they did drop as a single last week or the week before, mm-hmm. which we, we I purposely didn't listen to because <laughs> yeah. I wanted to wait till the album. Um, and then obviously, I think, I think they're the only two songs that really grabbed me. And I had to go look at my phone and go, that's that song. The rest of it I kind of like listen to and it's like, okay. The, my main thing with this is like, I can tell this is a band that grew up and got into music around the early 2000s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so 
tinged with like I think Paul probably said like bands like Nine Inch Nails and all that kind of stuff and like new metal vibes. There's some heavy Slipknot. Thing yeah. There. There's some yeah. very Slipknot riffs and there's oh, yeah. I wish I could fucking remember the song. There's a song which starts off with um, a fucking some heavy ass drums with Sound Mint but I swear if it <laughs> if it carried on it would have gone in so I think it like would be left behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I mean, is also a, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. It's sound with the sound they've developed goes wonderfully with yeah. it. <laughs> I think it's also got like some weird twists and like so like you've got like, the heavier side like obviously you've got the electronic new nine snails which is obviously the heavier side of electronic music. Mm-hmm. A lot of new metal influence in here. Uh, but then there's like this kind of like that sort of grungy clean vocally style. Not grungy like Nirvana but like Alice yeah. in Chains Their sort clean of. vocals are very grunge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like some bits like that. And then there's some like it's just listen to this I can just like it's not like the dated or they're trying to be those bands from that decade. You can just tell they were so fucking influenced by those mm. bands, and it's coming through so strong. Yep. Which is cool. That's that'll probably work for some people. For me, it's a bit off-putting in a sense, just because I don't want to listen to that stuff anymore. If that makes sense. No, that's fair. I can um, appreciate it and be like, yeah, musically you sound tight. The song is cool. Yeah, but I I kind of don't want to hear that style anymore, and I don't listen to that really anymore. And on set for last year when we had to listen to fucking corn and all that shit. Yeah, it was a good album. <laughs> it was a good album. But, and this is also a good album. It's just a bit like, yeah, so it's cool they're like they're bringing this in. And obviously it's this nice evolution as the band themselves are bringing in new styles and different ways and whatever. Um, I think it really gets off kilter for me right at the end where it's um, a silver, a sliver, sorry, a sliver and uh, obviously the first thing underneath. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those last two tracks really fucking go right out, I think, from the rest of the album. And previous Code Orange, if I know my Code Orange, which I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just got right of Code Orange. Down but the last two, I think the last two songs are like really like, K. Okay. Good, good that you're doing different things, you're branching out, whatever else, but I, I could easily like probably not revisit those last two songs okay. again. No, that's fair. But I do recognise they are very well written. Yeah. And they do sound good. Just for me personally, I'd probably pass. But the rest of the album is like pretty solid. I'm pretty, I want to, it's, it's left me like a bit kind of on the fence with it. I recognise it's really done well. That's not right words. It's done really well, <laughs> and it's it's a very good record for this band. And like when like you said Slipknot, I actually generally thought these could be like a new Slipknot. Well, like, I, in, just in, if we, anyway. just for me, like the comparisons with it were a great atmospheric, creepy opening, mm-hmm. very yeah. Slipknot. Yeah, some fucking in. So intensely Slipknot and also early new metal like riffs and drum beats in there. Yeah. But, like, which became a bit more of a problem for you, I think they did a really good job of it. It, it. They did merge themselves with these, like, previous influences, which lent itself to an album which I think will massively stand the test of time and sort of be looked back on as the sort of the, the, the peak. Well, maybe, sorry, not, not the peak, but the time in Code Orange's career where they took that massive fucking step. Mm-hmm. I think this is the this is easily the album which is going to put them miles ahead of where they are now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and mean, a massive credit to them for that. This is what I mean. Like when I say they're like a new Slipknot, and I don't mean that in a way like they sound like Slipknot. No, no, no. I know. And that. I don't mean like like. So I mean in a way that like with the way that when Slipknot came out, no one had fucking heard or seen anything yeah. <laughs> like Slipknot. Yeah, yeah. And as, I, this is, I feel like this is the modern equivalent mm. of that. But no, um, I won't go on too much because. We don't need to. Like mm-hmm. as always, I'm third person now reviewing. I'm in the pool seat and everything's been said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Feel uh, my pain. <laughs> yeah, the, the only things I'll say is just like, one, I think this is a fucking absolute triumph for the band. I think this is, cause I, cause I'm not massively knowledgeable of Code Orange. Mm-hmm. Over the last week, I've gone back and listened to their back catalogue. Mm-hmm. Fuck me, this is a step in a very progressive direction for yeah. this band. Holy shit. Um, and a massive credit to them. I think, like I said, this album's, an album's going to stand the test of time. My only issue with it for me personally listening to it is there was one too many sound effects and, and like, a le- uh, there was a layer of sometimes, like, distortion and sound effects, which I wish were not there. Uh, I do think it works well for the album, but it just took certain songs. I think it, it, it had a little bit too much going on in certain tracks for me. I wish it was stripped back just that little bit. Um, I still think it works absolutely fine. That was more just a personal gripe for me, where I, I think I would have enjoyed things a little bit more. I think I would have. I think I would have almost got to your level, Paul, of mm-hmm. love for this if it did step back a little bit to have 
a few emo- fewer more sort of breaks in the music instead of and not and I don't mean the glitch breaks where you literally have no sound for a split second. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Like just so you can actually like concentrate more on the yeah. musical elements rather than but, yeah, the digital side. Yeah, but as a whole, it it doesn't do anything to take away from the album. I think it does work very well. I understand why they've done it. I think it's spot on. But for me, I that it just took that little step over the line for me where I was like, oh damn it, that's a bit too much. I would have liked it a little bit cleaner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's fair. I mean, but for me, I think as you guys have kind of touched on, like this is like the perfect progression for me from yeah. uh, the last album. Yeah. Uh, and I think it is, they've kind of stepped out of that, like just being a hardcore band now mm-hmm. to being like, what is like, I'd say six months from now when bands are actually paying gigs again, uh, I could see these guys actually reaching like arena status with this kind of sound. Yeah, possible. I think we I kind of go back what you said there. Like, I mean, my review might have sounded a bit weird, <laughs> but I will commend about like they've come like coming from their background, especially in this kind of the hardcore scene. Mm-hmm. They've really fucking stepped up, and no, I don't think I can't think of a hardcore band off the top of my head who's done something like this. Bands Parkway, like maybe. N- not within mm. not within like maybe hardcore, but bands which I feel like have progressed and like this band is doing. But I think this band's doing it far better. Is bands like While She Sleeps and uh, Parkway Drive those yeah. sort of bands where they did progress onto their sound yeah. and did keep, keep getting those steps up? I just think this was Code Orange doing a I lot feel, better at it. I feel right now. I feel the thing with Code Orange is that, that the scene they I feel like they inhabit, especially. I mean, I'm just talking about the UK scene because I don't mm-hmm. know. Where they sit else in the world, but like in the UK scene, the hardcore scene can be quite harsh mm-hmm. and a bit judgy, especially mm-hmm. like if you if you drop that hardcore kind of angry, pissed off stuff, and you do a bit something different, people will drop you like a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, you know I mean? like the hardcore scene, for as great as it is and how much I love it, it can get a bit pretentious in like defending itself. <laughs> yeah, um, which is why I'm kind of glad that these guys are moving away from it a little bit. No. The thing that I would say is that I that I love that they're moving away from the straight up just being a hardcore band, yet they're not losing any of the intensity that they have from their earlier stuff. Yeah. No, this like, is one of those few times where they've somehow managed to sort of take the best of the old, but mm-hmm. progress it in a way where they're not just shitting on what they've done previously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not lose any of the intensity that they had before yeah. as well. Yeah. Cool. I um, <laughs> I'm still glad that Underneath is the last track because I still really don't like that song. I do actually quite like that. I, I, I it's better, track when it it's, better it. it's better on the album, but I'm still like, I, I, it's just good that for me personally that it's on the end. It was a, 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 it was an interesting choice for it to be your lead single. Yeah. It was a damn good choice for it to be the last track of your album. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I agree. So, cool. Listen to it. Oh, God damn right now. It's oh, yeah. well That's deserving it. of most everyone's time. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I'll say Legend of Goddamn right now because I think it definitely, I think a lot of people enjoy this. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still, I'm going to give it a good couple of spins because just, it's just too busy. Yeah. There's so much stuff going on <laughs> yeah. and I can't fucking process it. I'm listening <laughs> to it three fucking times. <laughs> so I'm going to, I think, well, probably going to do it. I've got a feeling I might end up cherry picking <laughs> stuff off it. Fair. Um, but it's still, it's a strong fucking release, especially from the, as we kind of keep tre- treading back to like where this band's come from to where they are now. It's a fucking massive jump. It's great. So, it's insane, good. yeah. Good on you, mate. Good ol. Good ol. So, that's it. Uh, moving on to the last album of the week. So, the last new music section. Yeah, no. Haggard Cat dropped the new album. Haggard Cat. Uh, should have really... I've, I've moved over to Spotify instead of the fucking doc and I can't see the name of the album. Common Sense Holiday. <laughs> common Sense Holiday, thank you. I can see the word common. Come look at the track list. Common Sense Holiday from Haggard Cat. Um, so, we, we did review... Rational. Rational, thank you. Mm-hmm. Jack. Sorry, my cat's ripping up the carpet. He's Desperate getting, for a cameo. He's getting today, fucking heavy in these, aren't he? Uh, <laughs> what do you think I've got, Car Orange? Okay. Yeah, actually. What <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? I don't know if Lissus would have heard that. He did meow. He did meow on cue. I yeah, know, right? Yeah. That's what he does. He's good like that. Anyway, <laughs> Hagger Cat. Not you, Jack. Um, Hagger Cat, Common Sense Holiday. So, what did Gareth think of this? I'm going to let you guys go first this week because I'm a bit tired. Okay, fine. <laughs> I've got a long evening ahead. <laughs> yeah, I really liked it. It's been. A, it, I'm basically being like really positive on all music this week. Don't know why. So, so it must be wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I thought this was fucking great. So the there was two previous singles before Rational, which I'm pretty sure we didn't review, right? No, we haven't touched right. them before. We haven't, or we have. No, we haven't. Good, because I don't remember them. No. Um, I know. <laughs> I know. Badger brought up. You just like I look back on the previous review for Rational. There's something I wanted to say to you. And I'm like, 
Well, I don't remember my review. Well, for I'm going to ask you when you talk about this. The album. I remember being so after Just You and Rational, I remember I did enjoy it, but I remember being a bit more cautious about it going into the album because mm-hmm. it I don't it didn't fully win me over, but did enjoy it. Listening to this album, so opening with those fucking first four tracks, so first words, but then especially into European Hardware, Human Animal, and Show Real, which are nothing but like the f- most fun you could fucking have listening to a solid like. Is like rock, like good rock and roll, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. such good high energy rock. And then going into Rational, Rational all of a sudden just became one of my favorite songs on the album in comparison. Uh, to what I heard as just a single. <laughs> that opening lead up going into Rational, fucking fantastic. Do you, this is the question I had for you. Yeah. So in the, in the interview, <laughs> in the review for Rational, yeah. you said you wish you could hear that song. Just as vocals and piano, and that's how you were hearing it in your head. Is that still how you want to hear that song? Oh, I'd love to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, just, I don't remember I saying just, that, but yeah, yeah, that'd be great. That was, that was, that was, <laughs> you said it was like it was cool, it was all right, but that you really want to hear it. I, just honestly, I and think, piano. So it works a lot better, I feel, within the album than as a single because most singles do. I, I, I know, but this one more so than ever because you just have such high energy building up to rational in that opening track. Uh, in that, the opening uh, slot of the album, the going into that, it's fucking great. And then, yeah, if you did, you know, strip it all back and do what I previously said, and then it was just like piano and the vocals, that'd be even cooler. Uh, <laughs> but they didn't. So, you know, if they had me there producing it, maybe it'd be better. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Because <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm saying. Um, but no, honestly, I thought this album's fucking great. Um, and also, any band that want to throw um, a saxophone on there, Fucking in. I was going to be 100% in. And it works so goddamn well. I was so impressed by this. And I was also really impressed by... I Because I, having not much knowledge at all of this band, I was not expecting too much from it. Mm. Um, so that always helps if it is a solid album for me to just be very much one over yeah, if yeah. you don't know much of what you're going into. Um, and yeah, fuck me. For It is just a two-piece as well, isn't it? Yeah. For what is purely a two-piece, the fucking range throughout this album really fucking impressive and basically for me nothing but a damn good time I really enjoy this thoroughly can you tell yeah <laughs> getting <laughs> the energy drink just getting that impression as well. yeah yeah <laughs> um kind of agree yeah I mean uh, I'll go into details obviously I'm not just going to say I agree and move on but uh, <laughs> yeah I mean no I uh, I do agree with that well yeah the first half of the album makes rational better because it's that juxtaposition to what's going mm. before it uh, and then the rest of the album after that is great as well. Uh, it is just a big old slab of fun, this album. I love yeah. it. Um, it kind of has the elements of stuff that I don't listen to a lot. I think we mentioned how it's like, it is just an out and out rock album. Um, yeah. So I think when I was talking about the Rational Review, it kind of had that kind of like old school, like me- like rock vibes to it. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly Whereas- what you said. <laughs> Yeah, so the the rest of the album kind of sounds like it has elements of like the hives, uh, death from above in there as well, like yeah. another pop pop popular two two piece. Um, yet somehow manages to kind of meld it into its own little sound. Um, yeah, it has that kind of like the heavy side without being just a metal album as well. Uh, I think that's more from the production side of stuff, but uh, yeah, no, it's just it's just fun to listen to as well, like. Haggard Cat are one of those bands that I've seen around since they came out, but I've just somehow never managed to sit down and listen to them properly. Mm, mm. Uh, and I'm so kicking myself for missing out for this long because this album is just amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one second. Badger was it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess. So mm-hmm. I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to prove a point. If you if listeners want to skim back to the time we reviewed the Ozzy Osbourne album on the 21st of December, so the 21st of February, mm-hmm. we reviewed a bunch of albums and songs and I was highly positive about everything. I just want everyone to remember I can be highly positive about things. Uh oh. Before. <laughs> That's all I want people to remember. I do like things. Okay. So, <laughs> hang a cat, right? I understand why people might like this. And I understand, like, you, the, the key word you guys have said is fun. And some people might find this fun. <laughs> I find it boring. How? Because the thing is, and I think it's just down to the fact it's not my kind of music. It's that, like like you guys say, it's rock and roll or rock music, and I just don't listen to that. I know mm-hmm. it's easy to make the connection because it's another two-piece, but someone who really enjoys, like, 68... Yeah, you're going to bring it up. I, you gonna I don't up. understand how yeah. you can't, like, get like the, the same sort of, like, rock and roll vibe that they've I, got going I, on. I generally think if you put play 68 and then play this, I think the 
kind of far apart. No, don't, no, don't, no. But they, like, they are, but I but think they're I within think, the same vein of what you, I've seen yeah. you enjoy. <laughs> well, this is the thing, like, there is some rock bands that will slip through the cracks and I will enjoy. Okay. Like, I used to really like Queens of the Stone Age. Really love Queens of the Stone okay. Age when I was younger. Can't listen to them now. I find them boring as shit. But can you listen to the old stuff or just the old stuff I sounds don't... boring as shit as well to you? Yeah, I just bored of all of it. Oh, okay. Like, I go, oh, I used to love that. Go with the flow song, and I'm like, yeah, I can't oh, well, that's your problem. I can't believe it. Well, terrible. All the <laughs> keeping secrets, whatever it's called, I can't remember the fucking nicotine bell. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the good songs like this thing, anything like home. rock, <laughs> rock, rock and roll stuff, <laughs> it just isn't for me anymore. I just find it quite meh. Like so, listen to this. I was like, and it's, it's, you guys, oh no, I've heard the oh Rational's fucking great. I'm just like, and I, when I reviewed Rational, I remember saying I found it boring. But I blamed on the fact that I was expecting it to sound like heck or baby Godzilla. Mm. And I just think it's because of that music, I just don't like it. And I just find it a bit... I was like, there's this one song, Human Animal, he just says human about 50 times in that song. And I was like, for fuck's sake. And they just feel long to me. Every song felt really long. Like, cause they quite, I feel like they're quite repetitive in the lyrical structure and the way they're written. This album really only gets good to me until the last three, well, the last two, well, Chet, Cheat and Pearl. I love those two songs. Those are great. One of them has sax on, which you've mentioned. I purposely cheap. wrote down on a piece of paper here, Cheat Sax, so I could remember <laughs> the name of the song and the song that had sax in it. I really like that. <laughs> Cheat and Pearl. Uh, Pearl, Pearl, sorry. Pearl. Pearl. Cheat and Pearl are really cool. I really like those two tracks. And then I'm thrown off again because Ghost already just sounds like the intro just sounds like Frank Carter. Okay. And then, <laughs> that's all you got. And that's it. Oh, I just, yeah, that's I just really struggled with this album. I, like, that's fair. the thing yeah. is, and I, I, I went, I was like, in my head, I was like, I'm going to be nice about it. Mm. Because it's very nothing well, nice yet. <laughs> I know. Because it is well written. Like, I, and it, when it, I really appreciate it when it's a two piece because they obviously they've got more work than a four piece, like obviously, whatever else. You know what I mean? When it's two guys writing music and you can like, you make a big, massive sound like this mm. and whatever else, it's like, good on you lads. This sounds really good. The fact you two have just done it on your own it sounds great, and I imagine live it would probably be better. But it just—it's just—it's just the sound of it. It's just rock and roll, and I get a lot of indie off it as well. Yeah, but I, well, yeah, I guess if that literally makes your skin crawl fair enough, but like I have no issue with that at well, all. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's just, it's, I think only only certain bands for me get through this, and I tried to be biased about it, but I was just like, so I will say. It is well written, and I reckon some people, mainly you two, and, <laughs> Hello. and a bunch of other people, will enjoy this. For me personally, I won't revisit this. It's just not up my street mm. at all. And that's fine. Like, I mean, the fact that you said, like you said, that you recognise it's a good album, it's just not the music that you'd listen to. Yeah. Uh, I think mean, that's it. That's fair. Um, I, I mean, wish for me. Put cheat or Pearl at the beginning, and then that would have captured me I a bit more. I don't get that, because those opening four tracks, I think, are fucking yeah. intense and. Awesome. Well, I think I, think, I, I think, love them. I think like the first two are like I think no first word is all right. For let me just double check. <laughs> yeah, f- first word is fine, but it's four and a half minutes long, and I listened to it. I was like the first like couple of minutes, like one or two minutes. I'm like okay, it's fine. Then it keeps kind of going, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm just uh, it's not even long, but it just feels long. And I was like, get to the next song. You know, like before we started recording, Gareth was like, how was new music for you? Week? I was like, some of it feels like it's really long. And I'm, I did say to you before, like, I'm blaming on that fact that last week all the half the albums were half an hour long. <laughs> Apparently, this is only forty five minutes. It does not feel forty five minutes, and for me, not in a good way. <laughs> all the songs just feel like they keep going a bit. I think it's because there's quite a lot of repetitivism in the lyrics and stuff. Yeah. So, and then now I can't get off a video of how I get cats on my phone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. I think people will enjoy this. I know a lot of people will enjoy this. And they are obviously very good musicians and everything, but mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like, not for it's me not for personally. You. That's no. fine. No. I mean, um, yeah, for me personally, I think this is, is great. Again, it's not a sound that I would typically listen to. Uh, it's stuff I used to listen to when I was younger, a bit like you did, but it's stuff that I've not grown out of. Mm. Uh, like, I, I've, I don't find boring, uh, as you said. Uh, like I still enjoy this kind of sound uh, within reason. Um, it kind of ticks those kind of like boxes, as I say, like with the death from above. I even say it's got like elements of old Million Dead, as old Frank Turner's old band. Yeah, yeah, these are bands I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. Like, these are bands yeah. that I grew up listening to, so like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I love them. Um, so yeah, like this captures that sound perfectly for me, uh, but still puts like a nice fun element to it. 
so for me personally, I love it, um, and I'm definitely going to go back and check and check out some of their older stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, I completely agree. And also, I really want to see this band live. And if I do, <laughs> if they, next time they do come around, I have a chance to see them live. I, I feel like we announced them on a tour lineup at some point, but I can't remember for life. Yeah, they're doing a headline tour. They're doing a headline tour. Okay, yeah. until it gets cancelled. Yeah, until it gets cancelled because of coronavirus. Yeah, but I would love to get to see these, and I feel like I need to bring Badger with me. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like I'm, this band could win you over live. <laughs> well, I'm tempted to like go back and check out something because I say like cheat is I fucking love cheat. Cheat's yeah. a great tune. The fact that there's a sax in the middle of it just blew me a fucking way. <laughs> like the, the beginning sounds like this is great. If it's I fucking love this. Oh my god, there's a sax in it. I love this. Right, I've, we 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 get to learn about ourselves during these podcasts, <laughs> and the two main things I've, I've learned about Badger is put a saxophone on your album if you want him to love your album. Have a flamethrower on stage if you want him to enjoy your, your stage show. <laughs> I love a gimmick. I love a gimmick. Love a gimmick. Still hate ghosts, though. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never get ghosts. Yeah, I don't get it. No. Anyway, Haggard Cat. Great. Yeah. Fucking list this on goddamn right now for me. I really enjoyed this. Mm-hmm. Thought it was fantastic. I'd say check it out. If, if you're if, if, you, if you want a bit of rock and roll, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, it's one of those for me. Like, I think if you like, like, I think you kind of guys have all said it, like, yeah. with. If you like Death from Above or Queen's Stone Age or whatever, just rock in general. Frank Neat Frank Carter. Oh, no, check this, this is far better than that. No, just uh, okay, Frank, Frank, Frank. Okay, no, <laughs> modern room Frank Carter. Yeah. I mean the the, the oh, it's last not that bad ball. <laughs> Corona. Corona. Ghost already <laughs> just sounds like the beginning of fucking hate me or something. I'm sure it does. <laughs> uh, anyway, but yeah, Kaga Cats, go check it out. Chopped up. Chopped up. Nailed it. Cool. Post our life. We're all good. Yeah, I'm still so, here. Hello. Yes. Right, that's it for new music this week. We'll be back next week with whatever's come out in the meantime. Sure. Unless something gets cancelled. All the arms get cancelled because Corona. Yeah. Yes. Who's to say? That, that's how digital stuff works. Yeah. It gets cancelled. I'm just waiting for that Milk Teeth album now. That's what I'm kind of waiting for at the moment. Yeah. Milk Teeth and every time I die to announce theirs. Mm-hmm. Also, South Bard and Palm Reader. It's so many be, good things. The, the back end this year is going to be fucking great. <laughs> Can't wait for it. <laughs> I'm going to have a fucking field day. Um, before we move on to Don't Trust the Internet, Gareth is fucking ready for it. I can see him on his phone. No, I'm on my calendar seeing what albums are coming out. Okay, fuck you. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> really so I'm going to quickly talk about my experiences seeing uh, Turnstile and Employed Surf and Palm Reader live. Ooh. 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 Someone got to go to a gig that yeah, got cancelled, did they? I, got, yeah. <laughs> I went to gigs, but they all got cancelled. <laughs> nice. Look at so, me, I'm not yeah. on self-isolation. Yeah. Don't expect <laughs> this segment to happen any yeah. <laughs> over the next few months. Just yeah. think, also explain, well, before we get to the Employed Serve bit, explanation, Paul's going to be super bitter because he was meant to be watching Employed Serve tonight. Yeah. But now he's got coronavirus or a bad cold, one of the two. Yeah. So... So being safe, better safe than sorry, and all that. Better safe than sorry, but you miss something great. Um, mm. <laughs> so yeah, it's, went to Bob down to Manchester on Monday to watch Turnstile play with a couple of different bands, uh, as is tradition for Badger Brogdon. I didn't watch the first two support bands Twat. because people have work and we had to get some food and whatever else. But I did go in to watch the band Gag. First off, I mean, I wasn't super made comfort by the name, but I was like, <laughs> I'll go in open-minded. I'll go in open-minded. They might be great. I mean, Turnstile are great, so why wouldn't they have See, a great See, I'd be going in the other way around and be like, this band's called Gag. This is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> they were fucking terrible. <laughs> really? Oh, what? <laughs> this is the, one of the reasons why I don't watch the Fortnite, because I just wasted <laughs> my time. It, the fuck? It, oh, man. It was like... I can't even describe how bad it was. So it was like... It seemed like... Hang on, was Turnstile the one that got changed from a venue like to a venue you didn't oh, yeah. like? I will, I, will, I will, yeah, this will affect my review. So originally, Turnstile wanted to play Manchester Academy 2, which is an okay venue. Three. Two. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're booked for two. Sure, all right. Which is a pretty big venue. Yeah. I was confused when I saw that. I was like, nah, you know what, Turnstile are pretty big, aren't they? Pretty popular. Yeah, I was expecting that, though. So, but I, oh, well, that's what probably the promoter thought went, oh no, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> it got bumped down to a club academy, which is... Uh, a reasonably smaller venue, which uh, it's I, which an awkward I, venue, unfortunately, which is isn't it? M- one of my least favorite venues in Manchester, uh, which you might have heard me talk about when I reviewed Not Loose earlier uh, this year. But yeah, so it gag it basically like a bunch of kids hired someone's dad to be terrible as a <laughs> friend, um, where he just shouted. It was like 
the vocalist was doing shit punk shouting. Right. Like, ah, da, 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 like that. But then we like so much fucking reverb and echo on his fucking voice. By the time he finished his second word, the first word was still fucking going. <laughs> oh, it's fucking, it was horrible. Everyone was like, I, I, and I'm like, I'm a miserable cunt. Yeah. I understand I'm not like, I don't like everything. Like we've just been through the reviews. But, like literally <laughs> everyone always with us like, this is fucking shit. It was horrible. I kind of want people to listen to Gag yeah, I'm gonna have to, to hear how to fucking it. bad it is. I did check You're going to be really annoyed when I come back to you and be like, I kind of like it. You fucking will probably. I probably will, won't I? <laughs> it's just like one of those bands where they should, like, when they're like, an old guy who doesn't want to give up the dream just hires a bunch of random kids to be like, you play these instruments, I'll just shout this mic, we'll be fine. I like his random he's, old guy. Have you looked it up? He's, he's probably going to be younger than you, isn't he? <laughs> he looked like, he, he looked fucking old to me. <laughs> I will quickly have you heard anything of Gag because like, other no. than being part of this tour I've never heard of them people no not all no uh, yeah I mean, but I, I kind of tweeted like without mentioning the band on Twitter I tweeted out the band and literally well I just tweeted out the fact that I've just watched one of the worst supports I've ever fucking seen in my life and someone tweeted at me like no, this always happens with Turnstile they always just bring out terrible supports apparently <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great way of like making sure you don't get upstaged I guess yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah Yes, I mean I'm just I'm just quickly. I'm sure I'm sure that probably wasn't what they were planning to do. I'm sure they fucking <laughs> love that band. I mean I'm, I'm just quickly scrolling through some pictures of Gag, and the guy might not be old, but he looked like someone's dad on stage at the time. <laughs> okay, so that's what I liked it, and literally everyone I'd with at the time said it was just someone's dad. <laughs> so he could be twenty. Who knows? But I can't wait to listen to Gag. Maybe he just go <laughs> eat some fruit and have an exercise. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> so they turned on came on. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so we left halfway through gag because it was terrible and I was gagging. Um, <laughs> so yeah, anyway, we came back down for Turnstile. Turnstile are a fucking great live band. They never won't ever be a great live band, I don't think. Seen a handful of times, they've always put a, a smashing show on. My wife was quite upset because the singer wasn't as flamboyant as he was in Jera and didn't take his top off. Oh. Was, which I was fine with. <laughs> <laughs> you should have taken your top off. Yeah. It'd be fine. It, was, it, was, it was one of those... Uh, the, the only downside to the gig was only half an hour long. Mm-hmm. Uh, just maybe That's just, just over. That. The, I mean, the thing with turnstile is when you listen to a turnstile song, is you don't realize how short they are. Yeah, they're, they're not long. You, you do, they're, they're, but they can just play more. Yeah, <laughs> but they, they've played fifteen songs, and it still fit half an hour. So don't want to ask more than that. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I mean they just played a lot of fucking great stuff. Nice mix off um, the last album, the album before that, and a couple of deep like. Stuff off the EPs that were fucking. There's, I think there's one song of like the very first EP they put out, mm-hmm. which I don't think I've ever listened to before. Bad Turnstile fan. Um, <laughs> but no, slapped f- himself on the wrist. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking great. It's just it's one of those where like I try not to be judgmental because of the venue, but I fucking hate that venue so much. <laughs> but and I was in the literally same place I was for Not Loose, which is pushed up against the bar. The downside was I'd had a couple of beers and there was a guy who was pushed up behind the bar behind me, so he got a lot of my ass. Just grinding and like fucking <laughs> dancing away in front of him. <laughs> fucking loving it. They're a fucking great band, man. I just fucking love them live. I, I literally, turns out if you go check them out, you should do. They're fucking awesome live. Can't really say more than that. So, even in a shit venue, they can stand strong. And it's sold out, so yeah. it's a big. It's, it's not a bad venue. What is it like? A thousand? No, oh, I'm Maybe terrible more. when it comes to capacity of work now. <laughs> how many people are in there? <laughs> it's a decent size. What venue. is this like? It's five, like, ten people? It's like it's, it's two thousand guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but anyway, but the thing is, so this was sold out. Wall to wall, done. Two days later, made the trip back to Manchester, and um, head up to Academy Three, which I believe is the smallest venue in that building. Yeah, but a fucking great venue. It's fucking great. I've yeah. not been in that venue. I don't think I've been in that venue for like 10 years or something. I just fucking realised it. This is the point where I get bitter. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Prepare for bitterness. So, bitterness you'll, also, you'll, be, you'll be bitter and shocked. I turned up, so we went out early to watch Palm Reader. I fucking love Palm Reader. Good for you. And I know, the right? support band you do missed? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you, you miss Cruelty, who are Cruelty. really good. Oh. Well. Again, food and jobs and people meeting and everyone. Yeah. We had to wait for my mate to finish work at okay. half six. Um, blame someone else. But at least you've got to see Palm Reader. Yeah. That would be... You'd be doing yourself a disservice, disservice if you missed yeah. them. So I was like, I was, I was wondering, because obviously the last time we talked about Palm Reader was Holy Raw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fucking Palm Actually, Raw. before we segue into the actual band themselves, mm-hmm. I turned up at this venue expecting a decent crowd. Like a big crowd. Yeah. Not massive, but like 
the point where I'd have to like get to the sound desk and make a wiggle into the room. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Fucking dead. Really? So yeah. disappointing. So disappointing. Like I think there was about a complete fucking stab in the dark. Fifty or yeah. less. I'm hoping that is down to. I mean, it's always a bit harder when we're talking midweek, but also maybe some fuckers really are scared of the coronavirus right now. Um, <laughs> so it's a shame because obviously, Palmer are a fucking great live band, solo employed servant. It's a shame to not see the turnout that we would expect for this. Yeah, but um, Palmer came on, and say last time we saw them was Holy Raw, and we fucking I think we all lost our minds. Oh god, yeah, yeah. they're fantastic. When they played, oh, right. And that was like in a smaller venue. That was absolutely filled to the rafters, and the band was just fucking energetic and stuff. Yeah, and we were all drunk, so we had a fantastic I mean, time. Paul I mean, wasn't. <laughs> Paul say, yeah, you say we all. Tr- Paul was <laughs> drunk on the riffs. I mean, to be fair, yeah, I so. think I was sort of hung over at that point yeah, as well. Yeah. So just you, mate. <laughs> no, yeah, so I was drunk. But like, um, no, fucking Parliament absolutely fucking smashed it. I think one of the bands are like literally they're just better live. Yeah, like on record, the fucking great. Braille is a fantastic album, mm-hmm. but live is so yeah. next level. Well, that's the thing. I grew my love of that band by accidentally seeing them live basically three times, and it was only after the third time I went, I should probably actually just listen to this band on record, and finally listen to Braille. And yeah. oh, fucking hell, it's yeah, so it's good, great. so good. Yeah, that band is spot on, mate. And it's but like, such, so such gutting, so gutting yeah. to hear they had uh, quite a poor turnout. Yeah. It's the thing. Yeah, I, I felt bad for the bands on the show, like with a bad turnout, but like. Yeah, but primarily, like, just, I don't know what it's about them live. It's like they take the next, the songs then up a bit, and they're just so much better. Even like you go back and listen to them. So if you watch them live, and then go to the album and be like, this is still good, but fuck me live. It's yeah. just fucking so good. Um, There's only seven songs set, but it was fucking, for the whole time, I think the stage time was about half an hour probably. Mm-hmm. Just I was just fucking mesmerized, like, and by the end of the, like, about three quarters in, I was just fucking had a big, fucking big, fast grin on my face. Yeah. I was like, I'm fucking loving this. They get the, the same treatment as if, Ithaca for me when I see them. I'm just saying, I'm just like, this is not, it's not nothing they can really do within their performance and their set, which doesn't make me yeah. want to just smile and not miss a thing, like, mm-hmm. into it. The thing is, I, was, I think for me, it's like, obviously we're saying, like, with Holy Raw, where it's a lot of busy venues, sweaty bodies, everyone's fucking dancing, diving about and stuff. And this was just like, Three rows of people stood there bobbing their heads. Mm-hmm. And the band is still fucking going for it. Still fucking slashing it out. Yeah. Like, they're not affected by the shit turnout I mean, or whatever you'll, it is. you'll very rarely see a band openly show that... <laughs> no, we can, I think sometimes you can you can tell a band will perform differently in a sold-out venue to like a venue with no fucker in it. Because yeah. it's weird standing yeah. in a room. Yeah, yeah. It's weirder standing in a room in front of 10 people than it is standing in a room full of 100 people. <laughs> You know, it is for me personally. No, I can imagine. You're, yeah. you're more focused yeah. <laughs> on that one person. But um, no, Don't and also the, contact. That's all. Yeah, thing. exactly. That's always the worst. Yeah. Um, also, during the set, I, I can't remember if they did this at Holy Roll, but they dropped a new tune in the middle of the set. No, yep. I don't think. Oh, did wait? They did. Yeah, they did. I remember them yeah. talking about it going into record. I don't remember hearing the new song. They dropped a. I think they pretty much played everything from Braille, and then they dropped an old, a couple of old songs and a new one. Saying that, I guess at the time we wouldn't have noticed. It was quite similar. The settlers, <laughs> I think, the settlers was quite similar then to Holy Raw. Maybe yeah. obviously a bit short, probably because sport. I wasn't as familiar with. Like uh, yeah. Wasn't as familiar with the back catalogue then. It was yeah. since seeing that then for the third time live, I went. I think I might actually go back to the back catalogue and listen <laughs> to some music. Yeah. <laughs> I think the last song they finished off was off like an older, an older track, and that was it sounded so good. I need to yeah. revisit that stuff. But the new song sounds pretty strong as well. I'm really fucking excited to hear that new album. Can't wait. And then obviously after that, Implode Surf came on. Um, fucking high energy. Like by that point, a few people had turned up. A few more, not dramatically more. Maybe like another twenty or something. Represented in the windbreakers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were in the windbreakers. <laughs> they love them in place of windbreakers. Yeah, again, a place of um, just fucking Slade. A great. I think. I think I said that after the day after, like they're probably one of the best UK metal bands, if not the best UK metal band at the moment. Live so tight, just fucking absolutely crushed it. The set was quite new album based, but it had a nice dash of a few all the tracks in it as well. Um, just fucking solid, absolutely great. I just, I appreciate like I enjoyed them in a head like a head banging metal way. I was like, this is really good, but it's just some bad palm reader. Yeah, I just fucking love palm reader. <laughs> so. I mean, at the end of the day, I've got 45 quid off me, so I really enjoyed that. Well, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm to say. To be fair, like, Palm Reader already took your money last year when you were at um, Holy Roll, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, they've already had some Loud money. Job, yeah. um, I purposely avoid their merch stand because I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't afford it all. So, um, 
the, I think the other downside, I think it's one of those things when you go to a, a gig like this and you want to see a band like this get a good response and a good turnout and it's not, it kind of leaves you a bit of a bit of taste in your mouth that it's like, what is the fuck is everyone doing? Yeah. Because it's so good. Well, that, the one that comes to mind is our fucking Sharp Tooth gig that made me you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Eternal Phone Motion was one of the best albums last year and it's a shame that they've done this tour of the album and it's in Manchester. It's not brought the attention that it should do. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I imagine the, the Leeds show tonight will probably be better and probably the London... Sh- sh- sorry, Paul. <laughs> Turnout-wise... It'd be better, and London was looked. I think I've saw a video of London that looks fucking great. What venue uh, are they playing in Leeds? Uh, Brunel. Oh, Brunel. No. Mm-hmm. Then London. I know in London they played the Underworld. Anyway. Oh, sold out as well. Oh, yeah. oh, I realized I saw a video of that. It looked yeah. fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> Just Manchester can be shit sometimes. Yeah. So. Can I go to a gig in a gas mask? Yeah. I mean, just go anyway. <laughs> yeah. Just cough on everyone. You, you're far nicer than I would be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. In summary, all the bands are great, except for Gag. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to listen to Gag. Please go check them <laughs> I out. I can't wait to tell you that I really like Gag. <laughs> when the touring ban has been lifted, go check out these bands as soon as you can. Hell yeah. Especially Palm Reader. Fucking love Palm Reader. So good. Or if you agree with what Badger and those guys are saying and you really like these bands, jump online, buy some merch off them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do that. Definitely. So, anyway, that's it for my quick live review. So we're going to jump into another round of... Don't, don't trust, trust the internet! internet. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let you explain everything. I'm going to go for a slash. See you in two. But what if you don't remember the rules? Oh, I'll remember them. I'll just shout the real out so you can hear me from the pisser. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Fucking second piss. Piss like a powerful awesome. Oh. <laughs> anyway, this is Don't Trust the Internet, the game where I find random reviews on the amazing website Amazon, where, weirdly enough, people go on there to give uh, interesting, juvenile, uh, practices, standard routine, right there fucking like GCSE essays put together whatever sort of random opinions they have throw it together call it a review and turns out it can actually be quite funny to read out because it turns out the majority of people who use the internet are idiots <laughs> um, so far we've done this three times now I think uh, yeah yes. uh, <laughs> not sure if you hear that badger shouting while pissing yes <laughs> Uh, so, so far, the scores are Paul is uh, uh, fallen behind Badger, as he always, unfortunately, has been, um, with six points, and uh, Badger yeah. is currently on eight points. So, Paul? Hi. You need a win, mate. <laughs> You're the best around. Is, is there any way I can lose those six points? Um, die? <laughs> cool. I mean, he's still, still have won six points if he's still died. Yeah, but it's a bit irrelevant then. You'll win. I think you have win. no competition. I feel like I might win regardless. All right, All fuck right. it, cocky. Yeah. No, I will yeah. win. So how this game's going to work? I'm going to read a review uh, from Amazon, and we can give you a choice of three bands. You got to guess what that review was, uh, what band that review was for, and if you get it correct, you then get a chance to get a bonus point by guessing the exact album. Are we all clear? Yes. Yes. Are you all ready? Yes. No. For Aldo Z Peaks review. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let me get into my position. For also, this. if you're not familiar with this game, they are basically all one star reviews because that's where the idiots really come out to play. <laughs> okay. Cool. This one is quite simply titled Pants. Exclamation mark. I know what it is. Continue. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Go on. No, go on. I'll give you a bonus point okay, if I'm you like... guess it now when you're right. <laughs> Blink, wait, to take out your pants and jacket? No, minus Damn one it. point. Uh... <laughs> Read the fine print. Right, you ready? Just pants. Don't believe the hype. Heard it all before. Tired, tired, tired. I think all the production has done, uh, all the production has done is edit a previous album. Yet they feel like prog workouts. Get Celtic Frost Monothesist for heavier, darker, harder, and more ideas in one song compared to this. Give it up, boys. You're sold out, and you are now fairly meaningless. <laughs> okay. Wow. Opinions, right? What a bitch. Ian said, has them. Don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> and who's the options? Your choices are, what's that for? Metallica, Disturbed, or Avenged Sevenfold? Mm. Metal, metal, or metal. Okay. Uh, Paul, after you, mate. What are you thinking? Uh, I would 
like to say, I don't want to play this anymore, but I can't say that. So what <laughs> I'm going to say is it sounds like somebody's not a fan of new Metallica. Okay. Is that what you want to go for? I mean, I, I don't want to go for any of them. I feel like I'm going to be wrong regardless. Uh, but no, that's the one I'm going to go with, yeah. Lock it in, Metallica for Paul. Badger, what's your thoughts? So, based on the fact, I, I really just clicked onto one word, and that word is prog. You said prog, right? Yeah, I did say okay, prog. Cool, just to touch it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, to, to clarify, you said, yet they feel like prog workouts. Prog workouts. Decipher that as you will. Yep. When you said that, and your habit of telling us well, doing bands that we know, I thought you were going to say COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to probably go Avenged. Yeah. Because I guess they can be classed as proggy because they're just based on the fact the songs are very fucking long sometimes. <laughs> yeah, if anyone ever listened to the stage, or oh, if you haven't, good. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I'm gonna go, I don't think it'd be Metallica because I don't think they'd ever be classed as prog. Disturbed? Definitely fucking not. Yeah. So I think Avenged. Okay, I'm looking at Avenged. Yeah. Oh, Paul, it's a good start for you. It was obviously Metallica. Oh. Obviously. Not obviously. It makes no sense no, why it's Metallica. But it totally is Metallica. So that's one point for Paul. Paul, would you like a bonus point? Can you guess which album that review is for? No, probably not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean... You, you just say new Metallica. Yeah, but when was the review from? That's the thing. Uh, I would uh, give it to you, but that would well, help. It wasn't from the 80s. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, was it Death Magnetic? 100% correct. That is a bonus oh, yeah. point. So, right, literally, up, you motherfucker. <laughs> Paul went for being like, oh, I'm never going to win. So I don't even need my points. You're fucking tired with Badger, Paul. Come Suck on, mate. It, Badger. <laughs> oh, it's on now, bitch. Oh, it's fucking on. <laughs> right, are we ready for a review from T Gore? Fucking yes. <laughs> right, so obviously, another one star review. Bit lengthy this one, so bear with me. Is also, that T Gore one word? No, it's T. Gore. Oh, okay. So, Mr. Theodore Gore. <laughs> Oh, that's my assumption, anyway. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Gore. <laughs> it's <Okay>. me. <laughs> uh, so, the title of this review is What's With All The Hype? I must say that I heard so much about this band, so I decided to give the CD a whirl. I tried to listen to all kinds of music with an open mind, and even though most of my reviews are for metal, I am not some mullet metal head that goes around bashing anything that isn't metal. What I am bashing is the musical talent of this band. None. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that this isn't your flashy rock band that tried to write simple songs. It just doesn't work for me. It seems like every single song lack any kind of emotion or feel. And might just they might just be a flash in the pan punk rock act. If you if you like simple music or this genre, then stick to Nirvana or even old school punk rock like Sex Pistols or The Clash. What? This one is a solid turkey, and unless you do a huge turnaround, I don't see them lasting long in the music business. Do people prefer soft turkeys? Uh, I don't know. I'm vegan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, your options are AFI, mm. My Chemical Romance, Ooh. or Funeral for a Friend. Oh, that's hard. Uh, Paul went last time, so Badger, up to you, mate. What are you thinking? That's an hard one, I think. Is... I found the fact that you mentioned about it really off-putting. <laughs> <laughs> it's punk rock. I remember punk rock, and then obviously we mentioned Nirvana, and then what was the other one? Sex Pistols. Yeah, or The Clash. Or The Clash. Just remember, there's some solid turkeys. Um, he isn't a, a mullet metalhead, and he doesn't see them lasting very long in the music business. What was the band again? Uh, AFI, My Chemical Romance, or Funeral for a Friend? It's got to be My Chem or AFI. I'm going to go... I'm trying to think which, who's got a more mullet haircut. Fucking <laughs> Jared Way on fucking TV Havoc. Don't think you understood the review, but I'm not helping you. My wife is so behind you whispering a band at me. <laughs> oh, she can see the answer. Don't be... I'm get, not even looked at Get out of this. I'm not even looked at You are not trusted. <laughs> Paul, I am sorry. If I if I think there's cheating going on, you will automatically get the point. Yay. <laughs> Going on. <laughs> <laughs> That's my wife, everybody. First time on the podcast. Uh, I, 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 for an answer, because you're taking fucking I'm, ages. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Uh, Locked in, Paul. What's your thoughts? Uh, I think Badger is wrong in uh, dissuading from funeral for a friend because I think that might actually be them. Oh, oh okay. So Badger locked in a- mm. AFI. Mm-hmm. Paul, you going for funeral for a friend? Yeah. 
I think they've got some oh, funky bits of notes. Oh, you're both fucking dumb. It was uh, my girl, the romance. Dang it. Oh. You know, that band which have uh, got to go nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Unfortunately, no one's going to get bonus points for this, but for shits and giggles, do you want to guess the album? Um, three cheers. Yep. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what else was it going to really be? This is, uh, sorry, Theodore Gore, but yeah, they did carry on to do... Pretty, I mean, they don't good. go far. They just mostly go Milton Keynes repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> just love a bit of Milton Keynes. Stop right, are we ready for another review? Yes. Shit Aww. is getting a bit weird here. Uh, <laughs> oh, hang on. Let's have a cat open the door, I guess. That, there you go. Your cat really wants to be the star <laughs> of this podcast, doesn't it? It does. What the hell? The whole family's crashing Hey, this in. is my time to shine. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> this is all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Right, you ready? Yeah. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, this person refused to put her name, so this is just Amazon customer, probably number 2052. Oh, oh my favourite. Yeah. yeah. You ready for the title? Yes. Yeah. Wait for a Dell 25. You're all posers. I <laughs> <laughs> can't fucking wait to this one. Oh, you God. ready? <laughs> yeah, go on. Howdy, y'all! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, this is how it starts, alright? <laughs> Howdy, y'all! Howdy, y'all! Another fabulous day in the good old USA! Mm. I'm a big time metal fan, and I especially love British heavy metal. My favourites include the Spice Girls, One Direction, Bush, and Mumford Sons. What the fuck's happening? <laughs> I told you it's getting weird. <laughs> yeah. But lately, this group has been getting a lot of attention. I don't see why. Their lead singer, Rob Halford, has proven time and time again that he just cannot sing. My personal opinion is that the band just need to retire. All their fans are posers in general, so they won't comprehend what good music sounds like. For real talent, stick with Adele 25 or wait until Donald Trump and Caitlyn Jenner release their presidential campaign album. Sometimes the people of Amazon... Just try practicing their monologue and stand up. Okay. Just a quick one. Yes. Who are the buttons? Uh, what the ones that he enjoys in the British? No, the ones that are in the in the thing. Oh, okay. Well, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> Judas Priest aren't an option, <laughs> even though he did say Rob Halford. I wonder if right. you fucked up. No. Fuck me. Yeah, hey, I put a lot of effort into this. <laughs> <You're a prick. laughs> Your options are Iron Maiden, Motorhead. Or Def Leppard. So this guy thinks Rob Halford's in one of those bands. This guy's either <laughs> having a breakdown or has too much time in his hands, I think. Mm. Yeah. His More importantly, British, he's yeah. also a metal fan who really enjoys the Spice Girls. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This has got to be a joke comment, surely. You'd hope so, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's got to be. Especially considering he's mainly looking forward to Donald Trump and Caitlyn Jenner to release a presidential campaign album. Cool. Uh, but, you know, that, you know, if you can work out the date, that might help you out in guessing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, so you remember, Paul, your options are Iron Maiden, Motorhead, or Def Leppard. What are you thinking? Ooh, I... See, I know that Trump came into power in 2016. Mm-hmm. And yes, I didn't know that. I know, yeah. you, you're, you're a gains badger, remember. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, and I'm also... I think... Uh, I think Iron Maiden. Yeah, you want to go for Iron Maiden? Yeah, I want to go for Iron Maiden. Okay, I'll lock in Iron Maiden. Badger, your choice is Iron Maiden, Motorhead, or Def Leppard? Def Leppard. Def Leppard. <laughs> Def Leppard. I'm trying, to think I'm trying to think now. I've really got this Rob Halford thing, so come ahead. I mean, you said <laughs> Rob Halford. <laughs> it doesn't and mean Judas anything. Priest isn't an option. So no, just, I know. Well, just, just put him down as a man. I'm generally trying to think which... I'm, I'm now... This is the worst logic I could ever apply to anything. I'm now trying to figure out which vocalist of those bands looks the most like Rob Halford. <laughs> <laughs> this the is... answer is none of them. Yeah, I'm going to say not. <laughs> I love how much you... Even with the most insane Amazon reviews, you still try to break down some sense <laughs> yeah. in it. <laughs> I always do. Finding sense in madness. That's the human way. Um, what were the options again? I am Aiden, Motorhead or Def Leppard. Hmm. I'm going to say... Because this, this review is fucking stupid. It's, yes. I could just say any of these bands. It make, there's no logic to be applied. That's 100% correct. What did Paul say? I am Aiden. I am Aiden. Right. Just to be different, I'll say... Also, spoiler, the next review gets weirder. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to say Motorhead. Motorhead. Because I want to say I mean, but I'm going to say Motorhead. No. It's a... I'm double bluffing myself. For some reason. Interesting choice <laughs> I know, right? Yes. 
Uh, it, fortunately, it did not work out for you. Paul, you get another point! Yeah, Paul! Yeah, Paul is officially in the lead. And I am rooting for him. This is Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, the, the reward is you have to listen to fucking botch or cave in. Oh, cock. No. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, I didn't mention, yeah, I didn't mention this, but we did agree that the reward for the winner after the end of the series would basically be they get to have their own episode. Yay. Um, which means niche, 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 or every time I die. <laughs> <laughs> I might do Incubus. <laughs> I probably have it. You probably will. Yeah. Uh, Paul, you do get an opportunity to get a bonus point. So, do you want to guess which Iron Maiden album it is? As I was saying, because I think it is around the time that Trump came into power, uh, I want to say Buck of Souls. You are 100% correct. Suck See? it, nerds! <laughs> See, what he did, he, he actually took good bits of information yeah, from yeah. the shitty okay. review yeah. and worked it out. Right. Okay. And you just chose Motorhead. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. I didn't even know that. I didn't know any of those Bonsai albums out in 2016. And, um, I mean, Iron Maiden did. Well, apparently, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know when that one came out. I, I don't came follow Iron Maiden's career. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready for another one? Yeah. Go on, man. Do you want it to stay weird? Notice how, notice how Paul's more into it now he's weird. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally. He is invested. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to disappoint Badger, that's all. I'm always disappointed, mate. Yay. Yay. All right. Are we ready? Mm-hmm. This is by, quite simply, this is uh, a review by William. Ah, oh, uh, Oh, it was Prince? left uh, February 13th, 2013. <laughs> what? February 13th, 2013. That is when this review is on. It's, it's You're telling us the year now. Yeah. It doesn't matter for this one. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you want another title? Yes. Yeah. Killed my cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cover your cat's ears. <laughs> you just run, Jack. Me. Run. <laughs> heavy episode this week, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, that wasn't planned. <laughs> you ready? I'm not sure if I'm ready. I might I'm not try not to giggle. Little Chansey Purrington's the second, my cat, <laughs> what? was sleeping on the windowsill when I started the record. But I forgot the volume was all the way up on the stereo from the previous night of partying. His, his greatness flipped the hell out and landed two stories below, <laughs> safely on his feet. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, then the neighbor's pit bull ate him. <laughs> <laughs> the rec, the wait, the record also blows manatee flaps. <laughs> the end. What Pacific animal? <laughs> that, that, that's the end of your review. <laughs> okay. I mean, after reviews his fault, he he essentially killed his own cat. <laughs> yeah, because, I'm from because of the partying and the sound levels. Um. Yeah. First off, if you've got a beloved cat, don't have a wild pie. That mm-hmm. upsets them greatly. <laughs> Always check your volume levels, guys. Yeah. Always important. Think about your animals. Yeah. Animals are people too. <laughs> they're better, actually, than people. I was going to say, they're not people, they're animals. Yeah. Um, they're I, I completely understand this is a complete shot in the dark for you two when it comes to being given you bad news. not. Or can... is it? Ugh. Maybe look for the deeper meaning. Ugh. Or not. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> your choice is Badger. Ah, Green Day, Weezer, or Five Finger Death Punch? Fuck's sake. <laughs> yep. It's not my so fault. He's talking about a cat. It's Amazon's fault. Don't trust the internet. <laughs> this is an actual review, remember, <laughs> of an album of one of these bands on Amazon. If you doubt us, we can tweet you the link. I, I can <laughs> give you links. We can tweet yeah. or Facebook, whatever. <laughs> if you want to question on these, pause up, it's fine. Also, this is, if you didn't notice from the previous, like, howdy, I'll, like, <laughs> we are deep in Amazon USA territory. Yeah. Those fucks are crazy. <laughs> Indeed. Um, what was it? Green Day, Weezer, and Five Finger Death. Oh, that's correct. I'm trying to think of what, what music would scare the cat. To its death. I mean, most. anything loud. I and guess. also, but, uh, but remember, the only real review of the album is it does suck manatee flaps. It's got to be Five Finger Death Punch, surely. The value is your choice. I mean, they are the worst band out of that selection. And if I heard them, I'd probably throw myself inside a bulldog. <laughs> so. You're going to go for Five Finger Death Punch? That's the logic I'm applying, yes. Okay. So, locked in Five Finger. Paul, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm completely lost. <laughs> That's, That's understandable. You're in Leeds in your bedroom. Yeah, oh, yes, I am. Hello. Nah. Ah. Nice. Um, <laughs> so we've got Five Finger, Weezer, or Green Day. That's correct. Those are choices. Uh, I mean, fuck knows. <laughs> um, just That's the correct answer. Yay. Uh, while stopping the right guess, I'm just going to say Weezer. 
I have, no reason for, I have no reason for choosing them just because it could be them. Oh. No. I mean, you can't change I wasn't, I wasn't sure if Five Finger Death Punch were abandoned in 2013. They probably were. It's yeah. fine. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Paul is officially uh, flying ahead because he is correct with that being a uh, review of Weezer. Damn it. Badger. Why, why are you sucking all the Manity Flaps right now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Damn Manity Flaps. For a bonus point, do you want to guess the album that review was for? Uh, Red Album? Incorrect. It was Pinkerton. Oh, the okay. most divisive album, uh, but is actually the best album they've ever made. Okay. Don't argue sure. it. Sure. I mean, so, I'm, th- I'm not the expert here. We got one review left. Uh, Paul now currently has 11 points. Disgust- disgusting. <laughs> Suck it. Badger's still on eight. Bollocks. Okay. What happened, Badger? I thought you were good. It's the fucking reviews are ridiculous. Yeah. That's what I, I guess I, sh- I, I should have <laughs> let-, let your wife help you cheat. Eh? Should have let your wife help you cheat. Eh? Your wife help you cheat. <laughs> yeah, probably. Are you ready for one ton of matters review? No. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, just quickly before this, if anyone knows this guy, uh, just, <laughs> just check on him or maybe do a background check because he has issues and may not be stable and may be a danger to the people around him. Cool. <laughs> okay? Yeah, go. Um, one star review, of course. Okay. Uh, the title is Sremo. Dot, 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 dot. Screamo or Streamo? Sremo. Okay. Oh, okay. Can we all just assume he meant Screamo? I guess. Or Streamo? I mean, S R E M O. Srino. And Srimo I- was his name, oh. As Remo was his name, I'm assuming it's Srimo. Srimo, have you people went fucking nuts? <laughs> <laughs> That's we people have. <laughs> we, we people has. Yes. Gone fucking nuts. That was the title, right. That was the title. That was the title. Yeah. Right. Remember, I, I don't believe one should be around people. And if anyone knows of one, please keep an eye on one. I'm very worried where this is going to go. Yeah. This is the worst piece of shit I've ever heard. My cousin let me listen to it and asked me what I thought. I told her if she wasn't family, I would have slapped the crap out of her for listening to this crybaby bullshit. Juan, just fuck off, mate. Chill out. Just calm down. Right? Man. Sort your life out. Whatever happened to good old rock like ACDC? You people are idiots for buying this garbage. You make... You you are making... And then goes into all capitals. Bunch of little spoiled rich kids, even richer. Way to go, assholes! <laughs> this guy... Someone check on him. Okay. All right. uh, are you ready for your choices? Sure. Yeah. Juan's livid. Uh, your I choices are... Plan. Under oath. From first to last, or asking Alexandria? Mm. Uh, Paul, is your turn, I believe? Uh, I believe it is. Um, oh, I don't know. Like, this one... like They're all emo, whiny crybabies, aren't they, all those bands? That is true. That's what makes <laughs> this game a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> that views make no sense. I should say, yeah, the thing that makes this a challenge is the internet is full of psychopaths. Yeah, I know, it's great, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's like anyone can get onto it. <laughs> oh, dare they? <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with... Uh, I'm gonna go with from first to last. Okay. Any reason why? Or are you just stab in the dark in it? No, just stab in the dark in it. No, but well, like, can't again, that could describe all three of them, but... Yeah, it's just something about from first to last. It makes me think one would hate them. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Okay, Why? Why? From first to last of Paul Badger, what are your choice? Uh, your, what, what is your choice? Obviously, you can choose to say one, or you can go for Asking Alexandria under oath. So, wait, what are you thinking? Uh, did you say whiny rich kids? Uh, yes, uh, as he said in capitals. I mean, you me are making playing... a bunch of little spoiled rich kids even richer. Way to go, assholes! Me trying to apply logic to this has worked yeah. well so far. Yep, <laughs> I'm going to keep trying it. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to go asking Alexandria because they seem like the most whiny rich kids I probably know. How those collection of bands? Do you know them quite well? <laughs> I mean, I supported them once. Oh, well, I'm, and all they right. were quite whiny rich. Yeah, I can see that. So. Yeah. Okay. Just based off the music as well, they're terrible. Locking in? Yes. Oh, it's a good day for Paul. Oh, it's a very good day for Paul, because that was a review for From First to Last. Paul, how you feel? You're you're steaming ahead, mate. You know what? I feel okay. I feel okay. Yeah. 
Would you like a <laughs> bonus point? I would love one. Could what you, you guess the album it was a review of? I mean, I only know one of them, so I'm assuming <laughs> it's Dear Diary. Paul. Hello. You get an extra point. So, after that fantastic fuck you badger round <laughs> of Don't <laughs> Trust the Internet. That, that was the worst. That leaves the scores now at Paul with 13 points and Badger still on 8. I find the reviews this week were very nonsensical. No, you hate really? to see it, don't you? You yeah. hate to see it. Well, last week, the last couple of times have been had some clues hidden within. So my, I, I guess, stab in the dark in future. I mean, I, I just feel like you only have an issue within now that you're losing. But I don't like. I just I think this game is cheap. Well, I mean, let's let's check with Paul. Paul, what are your views on it? Have you, how did you find it? Uh, I found the entire game just fantastic and scintillating from start to finish. Mm. It's weird that um, me and Paul flip flopped on this. Yeah, it's weird, that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will do another round. We may still do multiple rounds. We never re put a cap on like how long is it going to go on for? Did we not uh, say five weeks? Uh, until the internet stops giving content, which is never. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure we said five weeks. Though. I think we'll keep doing it until we have no new music to talk about, and we have to do an episode based on everyone's. But whoever wins, yeah. personal thing. Okay. At this rate, probably botch or Caden. <laughs> I right. I'll I'll put it out there now. If I win, sorry, when I win, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will not pick botch or Caden. <gasps> well, there's, I don't understand. There's no other band. It's going to be <laughs> Billy Eilish and Watsky. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> it's worse. We're doing botch. <laughs> but no, that is don't trust the internet. Well done and commiserations, but I'm sure you'll build it back or not. I don't really care. Yeah. I'm just, like, I get nothing out of this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was a sour note. Gareth out. <laughs> <laughs> and that was another round of Don't Trust the Internet with the most cheeriest of hosts, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> and then that means another episode of Lounge Podcast is done for this week. Thank you all very much for listening. We appreciate you taking your time to listen to our fucking garbage that we put together every week. <laughs> Fuck you. That was quality, that. I mean, just that bit, but... but <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I know it's a Gareth out. Gareth's back to defend his game. <laughs> I mean, a lot of it was nonsense. Not your nonsense, it's other people's it's nonsense. Quality nonsense. Man. Quality nonsense. Yeah. That's what you want from the world. In the darkest times, we want some quality nonsense. <laughs> but thank you very much. If you want to support us in any way, shape, or form, you can do so for free. Just by following us on Twitter at Pod UK, Instagram at Um uh, Facebook, just look for Loudness Podcast. It'll probably come up. Don't worry if it doesn't. Um, also, it's going to be super cool. And you own an Apple device. You can leave us an iTunes review. It helps us in the algorithm. Or so I've been told. Also, we have a YouTube channel. If you want to see any of the things we talked about in an image, go there and mm. look at the image. Or Google it. That works. Hmm. But do the YouTube thing first and subscribe and like. Because Punch that bell. Yeah. Punch that bell. Punch your laptop. Just point your laptop straight across the room. Nailed it. Yeah, And you can't buy a new one because you're quarantined for coronavirus. Smack your bell. Thanks very much, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) See you next week unless we're dead from corona. Bye. Bye. Go buy bad merch. (laughs) I agreed. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B